very, very special going on right now. I've got to can show you, and then I'm going to show you why it's so special. Leopard, very difficult, very elusive cat to see. And you can see her walking down there. Look at that through the trees. That's a female leopard. And while she gets settled to drink, which she's going to do now because it's been a very, very hot day. Oh, she's going to be beautifully in view for us. Look at that. What a treat. Leopard drinking full daylight can only happen in this place, really, to be honest with you. Some of the best leopard viewing in the world. That's a female leopard. I can tell that just because the face isn't as muscular as what you'd expect from a male leopard of the same size. Male leopards are almost double, not quite. I want to look at that. I will show you exactly what happened now. She's running away. And you know why she's running away? Have a look right next to us, right here. Look here. There's a big male lion lying five yards from me at the moment. And what happened there was she caught the scent of lions lying close by. Now, this lion didn't even realize there was a leopard drinking right here. If it did, they would have tried to hunt that leopard. That leopard would have now making her way and making distance as far and as fast as she can from these lions. I'm very, very happy that she got a mouthful or two at least. It's not just this male, there's an entire pride of lions lying over here. I wonder if that leopard's gonna climb a tree or carry on running. That was very cool. Now, Ava, you'd like to know how old a leopard can get. Ava, in the wild, they live for between 12 and about 16 years. And in, in, uh, in captivity, they, li they live for about 16, with the oldest being around about 20 years. And the reason that they don't live that long in the wild is because it's really hard to live out here. You've just watched something that happens fairly often with leopard. This leopard at least got to smell the lions. In most cases, they don't. And leopard and lion are in competition all the time. And things like hyena and lion and starvation uh, and injury from the f types of food that they catch can have an effect on how long and uh, leopard live. It's called the longevity, so around about 12 to 14 years. And just have a look at this blissfully unaware. I want to go forward a little bit. These lions are not going to do anything and I want to show you that leopard. We'll come back in a little bit. That leopard is not going to stick around for very long. Oh, there she's in the tree. So she managed to jump into the tree. That is quite common. So she obviously got such a big nose full of, uh, of lion that she decided that treeing herself was the best option. I personally think she needs to get out and create distance. I'd like to know how fast leopards are. Leopard in short bursts can achieve around about 80 to 90 kilometers an hour in very short bursts. Look at that silhouette of a leopard in the tree, the quintessential position for an African cat. She's still looking for the lion, she hasn't seen them. Now, where she was drinking was a depression, and I think the wind had concentrated the smell of, uh, of that leopard, of those lions, in that depression. And when the wind changed and brought that smell to her, it was overwhelming. That reaction that we saw there was a proper panic reaction. She is beautiful. You can see that very wary look. That response that she had was a response that she's, she was almost born with. Leopard, you do not react like that to lion. Don't last very long. She'll probably come down the tree in a bit. She's not very comfortable where she is. I think she picked the wrong tree. She just picked the closest tall tree to where she was. Make distance when you see a lion. That is the key. Now she's looking around. She'll probably be able to spot it. Wow, that's cool. Kelly, you'd like to know why the leopard's curling her tail? It's a, a leopard's tail is like its mood stick. It's a, it allows you to basically judge the mood. 
Uh, that's one of its functions, and they use their tail for a variety of reasons. Um, one is for balance at speed, so it's like a counterbalance that allows it to, to be a little bit more agile. Another one is um, as a signal to their babies. So the tip of the tail is white, and they will wag the tip of their tail as a communication to, the, to their babies as a way of speaking to them. They obviously don't have words. They use facial expressions and the tip of their tail to communicate. And why I say it's a mood stick and why, they, why she's curling it is because when they are agitated, the tip of the tail gives away their mood as well. So she'll flick it from side to side, up and down. You'll, just by watching her tail, you could almost relate to the mood that she's in. I keep on looking over her shoulder. Those lines are still unconscious. Wow, that's beautiful. Look at those almost green eyes, that face wide open. She would have had a shot of adrenaline going through her body. Her body's reaction to smelling lion, danger, danger and getting out of there as quickly as she can. Leopard are supreme at climbing trees. There's no other large cat that climbs trees as well as what they do. Will lions climb trees? Yes, of course. They're just not as good with it. Leopard have got a special adaptation in their wrist joints that allows their wrists to basically lock and so they can't rotate and that allows for climbing of trees to be much easier than it would be for a lion who's not only bigger but also doesn't have that adaptation of the lockable wrist. Uh, Mrs. Amy, you'd like to know if leopards hunt at night time. Uh, yes, they do hunt at night. They hunt any time of the day, but they are better at hunting at night. So leopard being solitary hunters will hunt whenever the opportunity arises or when their body tells them they need to. Hunting at night allows them to put into greater use that beautifully camouflaged coat that they have and all the other adaptations that they have for hunting at night. If we go closer in on her face, you'll notice her big wide eyes with a fairly large pupil. You'll notice those whiskers that allow her to feel her environment in the dark and you'll notice underneath her eyeball on her eyelid, on the bottom eyelid it's white. That's to allow more light to reflect into the eye and give her more light to see with. That is amazing. What a wonderful treat to be able to show you right off the bat this afternoon. Now, from a cat in a tree to a flat cat in the grass, we're going to be sending you three and a half thousand miles north to my friend Scott. Well, aren't you guys getting spoiled this afternoon? Big cats everywhere. And good timing that you joined us because it looks like this lady has just decided to wake up. Oh, a yawn is a good sign. Lion, leopard, and cheats all like to yawn before they get up, so this is promising. But just like us, sometimes we hit the snooze button. So I'm guessing that's what she's doing. She's just easing into the afternoon slash evening. Hello to Adler. You would like to know how to tell the difference between a cheetah and a leopard that you've just seen with Steph. So I'm going to ask Craig to just zoom into the face of that middle one probably. Let's start on the face. Now you'll notice that this young boy has got some very distinctive what we call tear marks that run down from the inside of the eye down the side of the mouth on both sides of its face. Oh, it doesn't want to play ball with us but you would have seen that and the, cheats, the leopard do not have those. Also if you stay tight Craig on the spots Cheetah have got spots, whereas leopards have got rosettes. So you can see there's just solid black dots all over that cheetah's body. What leopard have is more of a rosette. So it's kind of like a black, almost broken up circle with a golden caramel inside. So those are two main kind of visual distinguishing features that you'll notice. But also leopard are much bigger and bulkier. Well, not much bigger, but rather, let me say, they are more bulkier better built for wrestling prey down to the ground 
whereas cheetah are better built for speed. So they are kind of built like greyhounds. They are slender and thin compared to leopards. So I hope that helps you. Another thing that would help is that if you see something high up in a tree looking very comfortable, that would be a leopard and not a cheetah because cheetahs are not good climbers. So I'm told you did have a leopard up in a tree now, it would be unlikely that a cheetah would be able to climb the tree nearly as well as that leopard did, if you managed to see that. Nor would it be as comfortable to sleep up in the tree as the leopard. So there's a few things that would help you tell the difference between a leopard and a cheetah. Good question, Adler. Another good question has just come through from Gracie. You would like to know if all cheetah have got the same spots. And the answer to that is no, they are all different. So essentially the cheetah spots are like our fingerprints. Everyone has their own unique pattern. And the same goes for zebra and leopard and anything really, giraffe. All animals look slightly different to one another, just like us as humans. Well, I'm hoping that these guys decide to get up soon, but you just never know what's going to happen on safari. And... I think I'm going to probably drive around onto the other side of them just to get a view of their face. But before we do that, I would like to show you some potential food that's not too far away from them. AJ, you would like to know if cheetah will always travel in groups or in coalitions, and no, they won't. Female cheetah will ordinarily travel alone, unless they, of course, have got cubs like this one, or, you know, she's still looking after these two boys, even though they're big. So cheetah mothers will only look after their cubs. They will never move with other female cheetahs. The male cheetah are different, though. Male cheetahs sometimes form teams, and there's a strong chance that these two males over here are going to form a team and maybe let some other males join in and who knows what will happen after that how many flies on me at the moment it's taken me quite a while to perfect the art of keeping still and I think it's because we need to learn to accept animals even if they are the frustrating ones like flies and not let them bother you but it's difficult not to get ticklish when they do this <laughs> Let's have a look at the Thompson's gazelle. It's lying down over there. So it'll be tricky for them to creep up, creep up on it because it's not preoccupied eating its food, but there is a possible snack that these cheetah may decide to chase a little bit later. Like I said, though, I think it's got nothing to worry about because it's doing nothing other than looking around. It's going to be very, very difficult for these cheetah, but maybe they will prove me wrong. In the meantime, you're going to be going all the way back down to where you came from with Steph. Got in the tree, and I must ask forgiveness. I initially thought it was...